Good morning, ambitious business owners. Um, happy good morning to you, Tuesday. And as promised, um, I'm going live today to talk to you about my favourite topic, <laughs> becoming known and famous and what the point of it is and <clears throat> some suggestions, excuse me, of how you can do it. So if you joined me on the live last week, I did touch on this um, subject and how the importance of becoming known for something um, allows you to become talked about and people can explain who you are and what you do if you have something particular that you become known for. Um, and this can take uh, the form of a lot of things. Um, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't just apply if you're product based, if you're service based, if you're online, offline. Anyone can become known for something. Um, now, obviously, you want to become known for something positive um, as opposed to negative. So what I've done is I've made a list of um, some things that you could consider to become known for. Now, sometimes you might be told by your customers or people who know you what they um, remember you for and what they think of you when they think about your product or service. Um, you know, I quite get oft, often said, oh, you're the girl with the curly hair. It's crazy, but that's what people remember me for. And they remember my business name and they associate it with the tall, curly haired girl. I get that a lot. Um, so I guess if I started straightening my hair, I may not be as recognized. And what you wear and how you look <clears throat> in some cases can be what you become known for. Um, there's a business out there that I know um, and the lady has pink hair, like quite obviously very pink hair. And she's very known for it. Um, that's that's who she is and what she's about. I know another lady who um, allowed her hair to go grey very early and keeps it very grey. And it becomes a talking point amongst her audience. Um, and there's a relevance behind it to her business. So the way you look and what you wear, it could be the colours you wear. See, I'm branded today, um, but that's not about being known for it. Although, again, some people um, could be highly branded, both themselves, their vehicles, their shop or um, anything. And they could always wear branding and they could become known for that um, amongst their local community or, or online. So I'm going to share my little list of ideas of what you can become known for. And as I say, the point of this is that um, people remember you, they talk about you, um, and when they describe you, that's what they use to describe you. So um, here's a list of some things. So we've talked about what you wear or um, your hair colour and, and that sort of thing. It could also be that if you've got bricks and mortar premises, it could be something quirky or unusual um, about your premises, whether it's the, the decor, the signage, um, the windows uh, and, and the window displays. Again, there's, there's very famous examples of stores that become very well known for their window displays um, and how they change or what's in them. Um, so that's one thing you could do if you've got bricks and mortar premises. Uh, it could be the signage. Um, again, you've probably seen on social some of the cafes that um, have quirky chalkboards outside with the messages changing. Again, that can be something you become known for because people say, oh, it's that cafe in such and such that has the, the great signs. They might not remember the name of the cafe, but you become known for the great signs and people want to see what, what it's going to say each day. Um, phone messages and greetings can be something too. Sounds small, but if you're if you do it in line with your brand and it's consistent, and if you take a lot of phone calls or you receive a lot of messages, then that the holding message or the message that's left could be um, something fun and um, unusual. Uh, your emails. Um, could be the, the tone of voice you use. Maybe you put funny pictures or images in it or there's catchy questions or something in it in your emails that you become known for and people look out for these emails and um, look forward to receiving them. And again, it becomes something that's shareable. So people could pass them on and say, check out this email, it's brilliant. And you'll get one every week and sign up to this. So emails and what you write. 
customer experience and the customer service now there's so many things you can do with customer service and customer experience to make you known for it um you know it, uh, uh, there's just so many examples whether you're in store or online or mobile um things that you can do to improve or set you apart again lots of examples could be um like a cafe that has a particular area for children maybe but it's rather unique and maybe it's got certain toys or interactive things something like that um mirrors things on the walls and the floors um if you're mobile it might be um the experience of when you arrive at the house they do something or deliver something it really does depend on what you do but think about the end-to-end -end service and experience that the customer has um, which leads me on to packaging as well so if you're online and you deliver things the customer experience could be the packaging there could be something rather unusual in the way you wrap it what's inside it um, maybe it's a little gift, maybe it's a handwritten card. All of these things make you memorable. It could be that you include a funny joke in it or something, um, or I don't know, an invitation to something. Um, but anything that makes you more unusual and different and that people want more of and to talk about it. Um, a special way of thanking. Maybe you surprise them with a thank you gift. Um, maybe you do a public thank you online or in a Facebook group or something like that. Um, anything that makes your customers feel special and valued and want to talk about you. Um, it could be your charitable connections. So whether it's certain fundraising that you do or a charity that you support um, or how you give or what you do as a, as a team, that can set you apart. And it, it might not just be, um, you know, the promotion of it. If you maybe sponsor a charity event, um, it could be that you sponsor a local child or school or um, any of your charitable and giving can also become something that sets you apart and you become known um, for being associated with that event or, or whatever it might be. Um, media stunts. Now, I'm not going to go into those, but media stunts is something else that can set you apart, make you known and famous. Um, I've blogged about this, so check out my blog on hullabaloopr.com.au um, if you're not sure what a media stunt is. Um, and I will talk more about media stunts. And for those of you that have been sort of following, I am launching something rather exciting coming very soon, and I will be announcing, and that will help more with media stunts too. Um, promotions and special offers. This again can be something you become known for. It could be that you have the one massive promotion each year that you become very popular for. And yes, it might be that you only attract customers at that time, but it, um, it allows them to tell other people about it. So your promotion grows and generates more interest, but people may then shop at different times of the year and become loyal to you. Um, but obviously support your promotional or special offer. Um, and alongside that, a loyalty scheme. Your loyalty scheme could be something that you become known for. It could be so valued and, and popular and people want to come back and use you because of your loyalty scheme. Um, I set up one with a local hairdresser that became very popular. Um, it was a very simple partnership loyalty scheme, encouraging customers to come back and to refer other people. Um, and that can work really well. So loyalty schemes, don't overlook them. Um, it could be your sort of behind the scenes um, sort of work and how you maybe share insights into who you are, what you do, your team and that sort of thing could become a very fun and engaging way to become known um, and your staff members become known and their personality comes through whether that's in video perhaps or live or um, through Facebook lives, anything like that. Um, behind the scenes is, is really interesting. And then final one I've come up with is in-store activities again a bit like um, a special promotion it could be that you um, have a particular activity that happens regularly or every now and again whatever 
that again you become known for and it may be that you create a partnership with somebody if it's bricks and mortar or if you're online it may be the one time or a couple of times each year that you do an offline event an activity that again you become known for and then people find you online so i think my best advice to anybody um you know it, it could be how you deliver something so I'm kind of known for my sort of practical, down-to-earth, hands-on type media. So I very much focus on traditional media, print, radio, TV, as opposed to the more digital space. So people wouldn't come to me if they wanted, you know, Google AdWords and SEO because they know I'm more offline strategies. I'm about customer experience. I'm about content. Um, I'm about traditional media. So that's what I become known for. Um, and the only way you can do that is to be really confident in what you do, what you do well, what you want to become known for, so that you can um, make sure that message comes through in all of your marketing. You talk about it, you blog about it, you do videos about it, you share examples and case studies, and you live and breathe what you do. Um, so again, it would be a bit um, disconnected of me if um, I started talking about how I'd just done some um, digital media and paid advertising and things um, when actually my focus is on delivering print media, radio, TV articles. So just consider what it is you want to become known for and go out there and focus on it across all of your marketing, everything from your website to your flyers, to your emails, to your telephone messages. Everything is about what you want to be known for. So hopefully um, that was useful. I know there was a few of you listening live. If you're listening to this afterwards, as ever, if you've got any comments, questions, you want some ideas, pop them in the um, pop them in the uh, box below in the comments box, and I'm always happy to jump in and answer questions. So thanks, guys, and I'm going to try and do one of these um, Facebook lives each week, generally on a Tuesday. Um, and they're all in answer to people's questions. So when you join the group and you answer my questions. Um, I go through them and I'll pick some out to answer. Um, but again, if you've got a question that um, you want meantime, just post them in the post them in the group and I'll answer them for you. Thanks, guys. See you all soon. Bye.